it going, man? Good to see you again. Another uh, another opportunity for you to headline, which I think you're probably getting pretty accustomed to by now, right? Yeah, um, I think this is the fifth one. Yeah. Do you prefer that? Would you prefer being um, having the spotlight a little bit off you? What's your uh, what's your preference? Um. Honestly, I like it both. I don't really have a preference because I've had good experiences with being on the prelims. I've had good experiences with being the headliner and vice versa. I've had sometimes where it wasn't the best experience being on the prelims and it wasn't the best being a headliner. So I don't think it really I, – I really don't try to focus on, like, the placement of when I'm having the fight, just on the fight, really. When you do get the shot to, to, to headline – I mean, at least you know, you know, your bosses obviously think pretty highly of you and, and, and what you bring to the table, that you can carry a card, that, that you're going to be in exciting fights against whoever they put you in there with. So what does that kind of do for you, I guess, um, in terms of when you're getting ready for, for a camp and, and knowing that, hey, man, like, these guys dig me? Does that, does that do something for you from a mental standpoint? Um, well, yeah, it's always a compliment when you – when you're being told you're going to be the main event, like you said, it means you can carry your card. It means the company believes in you, believes in your the value that you bring. And in terms of training, I mean, the extra rounds, that's the biggest emphasis to me is uh, more conditioning, pushing it a little harder, a, little extra, a few extra sparring rounds instead of just doing – four or five we do five or six or seven sometimes just to really push the body because who knows we might be in for five rounds of war you've been um you know pretty consistent the last few years in terms of how often that you've been fighting it seems like it's been every five or six months or so uh is that the kind of pace that you like that you're comfortable with you know maybe twice a year or are you the kind of guy who if they called you more often and, and said hey we want you in there every three or four months you'd be in there that often um it really depends on how the previous fight went like the Derek Lewis fight I got KO'd so I had to be out for mandatory six months the Jarginio fight I fractured well he I actually, my orbital with the jumping knees, I wasn't able to spar for about five weeks. So it really depends on um, the damage taken. Like, if I don't really take a lot of damage, I'm ready in just a few months. But if it was like a Derek Lewis or Jorginho or it's happened in other fights, even against Alistair, even though I beat him, I had a partially torn MCL from him uh, attempting a knee bar. So it really just depends on the damage. I want to be healthy. You've, um, you guys have had some common opponents, I guess. Uh, are, are you a guy who studies film? And if so, do you go back and look at his fights against guys that you've also fought to see if there's anything you can pull out of there? Or does all the film study get left up to the coaches? The coaches, they're the ones that pick the film, that pick the fights. But I will um, sit down with them and they'll point out things, things that they've highlighted, things that they think matter but yeah i let them like direct it i'm involved but they're directing it uh he's coming off a loss but he had built up a nice little run there and kind of in a hurry i guess um do you look at this as the type of fight that that keeps you in the title picture is he the type of opponent that that a solid win over him you're right there still yeah uh like you said he he's become a um a name in this company now he was he is highly ranked he you don't just get ranked for nothing so yeah uh uh a win over him um hopefully a finish over him that keeps me in title contention because yeah we don't know what's going on with stipe john gone and ganu there's a lot of just uh uh stagnation so i'm just really just trying to maintain my position yeah. talk to me a little bit i guess about what he brings to the table um i'm sure he's watching out for your you know for your wrestling but what does he bring uh that you maybe have to look out for that that he might be dangerous with on saturday night um 
we we know he's a very technical striker. He has nice, crisp boxing. Um, obviously, he has jujitsu. He's a black belt, so got to be prepared for whatever hill hooks and e bars, whatever type of craziness he might be trying to whip out. But besides that, just the basics. Every that's the beauty of this division. Everyone's a uh, a threat. There isn't any heavyweight that you can ever take. Like, oh, he's just a he just a guy. It's heavyweight. Any two hundred and fifty pound man hits you in the face, it could be lights out. So that's enough for me to be giving him my full attention. You're um you're not too far from home. I mean, kind of you know a nice little half day drive, I guess. Are, are you, uh you bringing a lot of friends and family over with you, I guess? And then. Um, how badly do you want to be able to fight in Chicago again? I mean, it's been, what, I guess probably four years since you were able to fight fight at home. Is this close enough for now, and then you're yeah. hoping that they get back there soon? I'm going to be honest. Um, I don't know. A lot of fighters, um, I can't remember their names, but I've seen articles where they get asked that. A lot of fighters, we don't want to be at home because it's already enough p p pressure. Like, it's going to be pressure if I'm fighting in Brazil or if I'm fighting in Japan or if I'm fighting in Chicago. But if, when it's in Chicago, everyone just expects like, oh, he's going to destroy this guy. It's a fight, man. We don't know. So, honestly, if they do have another one in Chicago, yeah, I like to be on it, but I'm not like, it's not a heavy emphasis for me. It's I could go the rest of my uh career without ever fighting there again. I did it once. It was amazing, but it was also a little nerve wracking. So appreciate it, man. Thank you. How's it going, man? I'm good. Um, obviously a big card this weekend, London heavyweights are super competitive nowadays. The division's super tight. Tom Aspinall jumped five spots with a win over Volkov this weekend. Um, after this fight, obviously you're not looking past Chris, but is he somebody on your ranking that if you get this done, he's the name coming up and he might be able to put you through in terms of um, the reach and the media and the popularity if you get a win over a guy like that? Um, like I said, I I think anyone in the top five, anyone, Tui Vasa, uh, Stipe, any of those guys, if, if Aspen, Aspinall is ranked above me, that's a worthy opponent for me. And, yeah, he's he's also another guy who's built up a name really fast. He just got a f f finish over a folk off. Someone I, I highly respect because I've been in the octagon with him. That is not easy to do. So, yeah, um, if that happens, I went over him also. What It really just maintains – I'm a realist. I understand this division. This division is Nganu, Khan. And there's always room for a third. That third might be Stipe. It might be me. But I'm being honest. Like, I just got to keep winning. You keep winning, you, you stay relevant. And for this weekend, he's known for getting in, getting out, one round, two rounds max. The plan is deep waters for you. You know, feel him out one, two rounds, and then make sure that he gets to feel what five rounds feels like. Um, The plan is to be organic. We don't rush. We don't force things. We don't hunt things. Like, if it goes one round, great. If it goes four rounds, okay. If it goes five rounds, okay. We don't hunt. It's it's organic, and if it happens, it happens. Beautiful. Thank you. I was talking to Chris earlier, and I said, you know, some people might look at it and just say, hey, this is a, a wrestler versus a striker kind of thing. But for you that you said earlier you were working extra rounds on the on the striking, is the wrestling at this point, is it so good? Do you still work it in training, or is it that you just kind of – focus on the other aspects that you think might come up in this fight, or do you still hit the wrestling pretty hard as well? I wrestle w once a week, and that's been my schedule since for the past six years. I've always put a lot more energy into my, my striking just because I have a, a lot more ground to cover. I've been doing wrestling since 2005. I've only been seriously into striking since 2015, so there's just a 10-year gap. So, yeah, I... I put a lot more emphasis on my striking. And um, I don't think it's uh, the striker versus the wrestler. I believe I'm a very good striker also. I've I've got a few knockdowns. I, 
I beat Junior Dos Santos on the feet. I've been on the feet with some of the best strikers in our division's history. I've been on the feet with Ark Hunt. I've been on the feet with Alistair. Like I said, Junior Dos Santos, uh, Eric Lewis. Yeah, I lost in this. He he was able to knock me out with that first round. If you watched it, I owned him on the feet. I didn't get a takedown. I owned him on the feet. So this um, this idea that I don't know how to strike, I don't know where that comes from because I've I believe I've shown I have skills in, in my striking. So now at this point in your career, it's almost like the wrestling only pulls out when maybe somebody is just really, really faulty in that area or maybe if yeah. you need a backup or if you're maybe hurt and you need to kind of go back to that. Or if it's just obvious, like I'm never going to just – if you're just standing straight up, why not? Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why not? It's, it's not hard. And I know people would be like, well, why not just knock them out? I don't know. That's just not how my brain's wired. I see wide open hips. I want to shoot. I don't know. So, yeah. So when you look at him, does he look like he would be, from what you've seen from past fights, does he look like he would be an easy takedown target? No. Um, I, I think the easiest one, and and it's not someone that anyone would have thought folk off I was able to take him down 15 times and no one would have thought that so you never know yeah yeah well speak about that fight with Volkov and then you're talking about Tom does it ever frustrate when you some of these guys that are coming up seem to be getting a lot more hype and push after only a couple wins as opposed to guys like you that have been grinding for longer and longer and working through more and more uh gentlemen than they have uh I'm not gonna say I've been grinding harder or longer but it's it doesn't frustrate me i mean they deserve hype i deserve hype it's it's um it doesn't really bother me just because i'm i'm not focused on being famous i just i enjoy competing at a high level in athletics uh i enjoy getting paid for what i do which is we get paid well and I enjoy my family and friends being able to be like, I'm I'm something they can brag about. Like, hey, this is my brother. Hey, this is my son. Or this is my dad. Like, I I like that. So that's enough for me. Um, the other stuff, it'll happen. It'll happen eventually. The last one that kind of piggybacks off that. That sounds like it's almost like a very blue collar mentality, yeah. you know, about fighting. So when you're fighting in a place like Columbus, which is a very blue collar town. Do you think you're going to get an extra pop from the people that that your fight style and that the way you carry yourself maybe will resonate with them a little bit more? I think so. I hope so. I know Ohio has a very good, strong uh, tradition in high school wrestling and collegiate wrestling. Ohio State is very good. But I know um, high school-wise, like, this state loves wrestling. So I'm just hoping they can appreciate it. Awesome. Best of luck. Thank you. To uh, piggyback on that with uh, the thought of Columbus, you know, the, the home of Kevin Randleman, uh, rest in peace, Mark Coleman. Are there any uh, anything that you have a uh, connection to Columbus that you're going to bring into Saturday night? No, actually. Um, I don't have a connection with Columbus. The closest I've ever been to Columbus was uh, Cleveland, Ohio, back in 2012 when I was out here helping um, – Steep A, get ready for Gabriel Gonzaga. That was the closest I came to being out here. But um, I've always, I've always had f friends because I wrestled at NIU, and half it felt like half our uh, roster was from Ohio. So I know a lot of guys from Beaverton, or um, I don't know anyone from Columbus, but from all over the state. So um, and it it. It does feel like home a little bit, just the Midwest vibes, the the personality. Because I I walked around a little bit yesterday, and everyone's just real nice, real like, hey, how you doing? And you don't get that everywhere. So that's how you know you're back in the Midwest, and I like that. Talk about your strength and conditioning a little bit. Uh, how many days a week, and what exactly are you doing? Uh, for strength and condition, I do that three times a week. Um it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. My strength and conditioning coach is also 
my striking coach. I wish he was here to give you because he would love to just dive into that. He he puts us through it though. It's a lot. I know it it sucks. Uh I actually have video of it. I'm working on starting up a YouTube page. I'm gonna start posting more. I know that's what everyone does. <laughs> how you yeah. grow your fan base. So you guys will get to see it, but it's hard to describe. Just a lot of aerobic, just a lot of we wear the heart rate monitors, and he he likes to have us in the red like the whole time, okay. as long as you can be there without passing out. So we we spend a lot of time in the red zone. Appreciate it. What other stuff are you gonna put on that YouTube channel? Are you gonna get do some uh, dance routines like everybody on social media does, or what, I, what are you gonna do? I don't do the TikTok <laughs> dance. Do the I don't TikTok. even have a TikTok. Uh, uh, it'll be mostly. Training stuff, a little bit of like hanging out with the guys. Always got to ask them, like, do you guys mind if I post this? Because it's not always for the public. But it'll be mo like 80% uh, MMA stuff and 20% filler, like, oh, we're eating this or we're watching this. A little bit of that. Do you have aspirations to do coaching or any any of that sort of stuff afterwards? Yes, I I do aspire to be a, a MMA wrestling coach eventually, yeah. That's awesome. Cool.